gentlemen is Stephanie and these are my two adorable and handsome sons and that is my ex-husband attorney Dennis Sperling he practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents he doesn't get paid unless you get paid and as we first wives know the more our ex-husbands get paid the more we get paid so let me help him help you call Mr. Mm -hmm. Sperling at 713-229-0770 <laughs> Hi, my name is Dennis Berlin. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you've been were in a car accident, call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, no, yeah. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy return in Dennis Berlin. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Berlin. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me at 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daddy, daddy. Dramatiz Dramatization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. Those of you black women who are listening to me, if you're a good black woman, this don't fucking apply to you. I'm talking to these hoes out here taking advantage and talking shit. This doesn't apply to you. Don't step in this motherfucking war zone because I'll fuck you up too. Yo, stay. Y'all had 50 years of sitting by watching these horrible, ridiculous ass women talk shit about black men. And you did nothing. You sat there and you kikied and you laughed. I ain't fucking with y'all. I'm leaving y'all alone. I'm giving you a pass. I get it. Women don't like to attack other women in public. I fucking get it. Don't jump in this motherfucker trying to defend these women for this horrible behavior. We will fuck you up too. Okay? Don't jump in this shit because by not saying anything about it, you tacitly agree to the activities. So stay out of this shit. This is necessary. This is a culling that's happening right now. So mind, turn the other way. Go back to your husbands and your children, sit your asses down and shut the fuck up and let these strong men that you've been asking for deal with these rotten, savage ass hoes that's out here messing up your reputation. Because see, some of us have daughters. Some of us have wives that are black. Some of us have sisters and mothers that are black. And we don't want to get them caught up into this whole shit. And we don't want their reputation to be shit on. We don't want them to have to go in public and be looked upon like there's some fighting in the motherfucking uh, uh, airport hoes. Uh, scrapping in the Walmart hoes. Shit talking loud ass, disrespectful. We don't want our daughters to get caught up with that. So let us men deal with these hoes since y'all was unable to do it. Here we are. We're going to deal with it. You have 55 years. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. You sat back. You let them do what they wanted to do. And now it's our turn. They should have listened to you, but they didn't. <laughs> and now they what? Now they about to get it from the men.
clap. Not bad if you like skin, huh? Big shout out to Simple Shit TV, Broken Blade. Who else we got up here? Where my memories at, man? Sleep with my third eye open. RDD, shout out to you. Solo Dolo, been here for a minute. The Watcher, shout out to you, bro. Sick with it. Yo, Broken Blade, I already gave you a shout out, man. Big shout out to everybody who's up in here. Arrowhead, uh, Jamal Smith. Man, we got a lot of brothers up in here, man. And uh, Kenyatta. Ali, thank you so much. I appreciate all the membership. And a uh, big shout out to all the folks in here who are uh big shout out to all the folks in here who are who are part of the the wrench mob, man. So we're gonna get this thing started now. <laughs> Unless you've been living under a rock, you uh, already know that uh Kang the Conqueror, also known as a actor named Jonathan. Majors has been arrested. And um, I wanted to take my time to kind of analyze this and try to make it um, something that you can actually learn from. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Jonathan Majors was arrested on Saturday, uh, March 25th, allegedly strangling and assaulting and harassing his 30 year old girlfriend. Now, the thing about his girlfriend is, his girlfriend is a white woman, white American woman. And as you guys know, Jonathan Majors is a black man from California. Um, you know, he, the actor, through his lawyers, he's gone through a, a great length to try to prove his innocence. Um, the lawyer, His lawyer even said that he's probably the victim. And, uh, and claiming that there are numerous pieces of evidence to support his position, including uh, videotape, and witnesses, and whatnot. Um, but here's the thing. The charges are already showing an impact on uh, his career, right? The U.S. Army, they promptly pulled a campaign featuring him as a star. And uh, this is days after his arrest. And there are even conversations going on in Marvel Studios, who's at this point remained silent on the situation uh, surrounding whether or not he's going to continue being able to play that role um, as Kang the Conqueror or the actor Kang. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the thing is, they haven't made their decision yet and they don't know what's up with the future and they don't know what's going to be up with the franchise moving forward as far as. Uh, Jonathan Majors is concerned. Okay. Now that said, this may just be another black man being accused of something he didn't do. But maybe this is just a matter that in that particular situation there in New York, uh, there's a mandatory arrest. And if he meets the criteria, then he gets arrested. Or this may be a situation where the police overreacted for what was could have been possibly a minor infraction. Um, even his girlfriend, allegedly, he says not his girlfriend, but she's saying she's the girlfriend. The news media is calling her the girlfriend. She regrets the call. Okay? Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> what, what do we have here? What are we looking at? We're looking at a black male actor at best, a black male actor falsely being accused of domestic violence by his white girlfriend. Okay? Yeah. Now, what I found interesting is there's been almost a rejoicing on the internets <laughs> coming from black American women and these pro-blacks, I call them blackity blacks, uh, saying he shouldn't have had a white girl. But here's the thing, and I want y'all to hear me. 
What about all these KK Keishas that have called the police on their black men? <clears throat> Where they at? See, what I see happening is deflection from the community. When a white woman, when white women do it, so that we don't check them. But everybody knows there are more black men in jail or dead behind a KK Keisha than anything that a Karen can do. There are women, black American women that have done the same. How many black women, how many black men are in prison or engraved behind uh, uh, behind a woman who called her brothers and her cousins and her family on that man. Yet they want to act confused and surprised when the brothers start getting their passports and going to the Philippines and refusing to interact with them, refusing to date them, refusing to marry them. The fact that the police were called is nothing new to us. Matter of fact, it's so common amongst black men that we already know what to do. What do we tell when the police get called? Relationship is over, ma'am. Anytime the police are called, it's time to end the relationship. Why? Because for black men, encounters with the police are potentially life-threatening. And once the police get involved, the decision-making is already done. We broke up. We are done at that moment. The police are now your significant other, or your boyfriend, or your husband. Pack your things and remove yourself not only from my place of living, but also my house. My first wife, and I write about this in my book. I told her I was breaking up with her. The next day, the police was at my front door. Even if I thought about reconciling with her, at that point, it was over. We got a pretty decent relationship. We done did a TV show together. But you can't get mad because I'm getting a divorce and now you trying to do something shady. Oh, no. But that's what they do. Black women know they can do it because black men have a special relationship with the police in the United States. Matter of fact, we have a special relationship with law enforcement in the United States. In the court system. That's why you always have... Black American women always bragging about taking black men to court for child support for kids that they might be paying for. How many of you dudes know dudes who've been paying money for women who have kids for them, just giving the money every week, every two weeks, whatever, and then she turned around and put them on child support because he decides to get married or he gets a new girlfriend? Y'all know that. And so now he's got to pay all that back child support plus keep paying his child support. So you got arrearages and everything to go. How about this? You got dudes paying for children that aren't theirs. And the stats show that there's a 30% chance if you suspect that the child is not yours and you take the DNA test, there's a 30% chance that that child is not even yours. Look at this situation with old girl who shot her husband uh, uh, on Facebook Live and then lied and said he pushed his way in after she asked him to leave. You basically saw a black woman who murdered her, her boyfriend or child's father with the mother, black mother cheering. Y'all saw it on TV. Y'all saw it on Facebook. It might have been her husband. And so what this proves is that irregardless of color of skin, modernized, modern westernized women are a liability. That woman shot her husband dead on Facebook in front of her mother who instigated this mess and gassed her daughter up with children in the house. Those children saw that, that body dead on the ground after hearing the gunshot coming out, coming out of their room. There's a video floating around right now. Right now, you can tell it's premeditated. She literally tells him while pushing him off the camera that it was going to be a murder scene. She didn't even call 911 to help him. She just stated she, she didn't want to go to jail. 
She even told one of her daughters who was crying about seeing her daddy dead, your daddy's dead. Rubbing it in. Now, what are the lovely ladies doing out here? The black American women on YouTube and Twitter, they're blaming him for lying, saying he cheated. Due to supposedly sliding in another woman's DM, what if men start shooting women for cheating and and talking to other men and sliding into other men's DMs and meeting other men for lunch and having drinks with them and flirting with people at the bar? Would y'all justify that, ladies? Would that in any way be justified? Hell no. You know goddamn well it would be an uproar. He's too controlling. He's too, he's too possessive. That's exactly what that woman was. But y'all won't say that. But you can get away with that line of foolishness because of the relationship that black men have with the police and black men have with the legal system. Meanwhile, there are four children who no longer have a father. Now, at least Jonathan Majors is still alive. Hell, his ex, his girlfriend, or I'm assuming, I hope if the brother got any sense or anybody with any senses around him, is even recanting her story. Probably because there's video evidence. Probably because it happened in the cab and there's witnesses and witness statements that he didn't do anything wrong. There's even text messages that are backing him up where she's apologizing. Nevertheless, like I said earlier, there's dozens of examples of KK Keisha's doing these things to black men and black children. Shout out to my man, MC Recover Wellness. He said, the book of Sympology, chapter two, be careful of who you let in your circle. For it could, for it could damage you, your image, and the bag. It's showing the hell will. And that's what we're talking about today, fellas. I'm going to land this plane. I'm going to land this space rocket in a minute. But again, I'll go back to that woman in Columbus, Mississippi, murdered her husband in cold blood. And the first words were, I don't want to go to jail. Forget about the fact that she murdered someone or the fact that those are his children. Her main concern was not about the consequences that she was, not about the the man and the life that she took, but about the consequences that she was going to have to suffer for her actions, something she knew she wouldn't be able to slide out of. Now, they're going to try like hell and say, oh, it was, she was the victim of domestic V. You know that. You know what they do. She was, he pushed himself in. It was self-defense. Because, see, let me explain something in the black community, for those of you guys who don't know, you're not allowed to bring up black women's violence against black men or their children. How many times have you black men been hit upside the head by your mama as a little boy? How many times have you young black men, older black men been punched or kicked or or something like that by your black mothers? Hit the number one button if it's happened to you. Hit the number two button if you know somebody it's happened to. I'm going to hit one and two. (laughs) Okay? How about that? Because we know what happens. We know what's happening. You're never allowed to talk about black women's violence towards black men. You're never allowed to talk about black women who call the police on black men just so they can exert control. You're never allowed to do that. The only time you are allowed to do it is in a comical sense. But you're never allowed to hold them accountable for what they do. So before y'all go start, all you blackity blacks and you black American women and you pro-black dudes, before you start blaming this white woman, oh, he shouldn't have dated a white woman, let's not forget all of the stuff that black American women have done to black men. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget the proxy violence where you call your cousins or call the police or get a man pulled in, put in jail or, 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 or take his children away from him. Oh, let's not, no, let's not, we're not going to let, we still, we're going to focus on you for that. Let me give you some names that you won't forget. My man Freedom MMC said the Queen Mother Goddess Simp Chip will activate in the DA to give her a plea bargain 
or the judge's chill will give her a short sentence. Oh, yeah, heaven forbid the brother have any sort of criminal record. Oh, my God, she might get off scot-free. This is nothing new. Happens all the time in the black community. It's so common, it happens to a lot of stars. Javante Davis, what about him? Y'all remember him? Hmm? What about him? What about uh, Brian Banks? Huh? What about him? What about him? What about uh, Adrian Payne? What about him? He never got his name cleared. What about him? So many. What about that young brother, Merlin Santana? Y'all remember him? Hmm? Malika Andrews. They slandered his name even when he died. See, the truth is, brothers, relatively speaking, and let's just have an honest conversation. Let's just be honest. I know Jonathan Majors, I get it. But the truth is, as far as directly doing something to you, brothers, directly doing something to you, I'm not talking about the greater system and, you know, the, the, the mass majority. But as far as white people, they've not done anything directly to you. It's these queens, it's these KKK Keishas and these simp enforcers. They're the only ones doing stuff to you. These baby mama raised emotional dudes carjacking and robbing. White men ain't out there carjacking you. White women ain't calling the police on you like that. White women are not keeping you from seeing your kids. It's our own people doing it to us, specifically these lovely ladies and men who think like the lovely ladies. So let's ask this question, because here, here's the underlying question. I want you to hear me on this. The question is, we live in this system and we understand this system because we're about to go deep. Some pro-blacks, they will tell you, leave that white woman alone, she's no good for Basically, she sell, they're telling you, this system is no good for you. And then they turn around and they still stay in this system. Shout out to Robert Platinum. He said, B-Woman had a man blow my brother's best friend brains out on my brother's dashboard. Damn. She bragged about it on the bus and I was there. She died and all of her friends said she was a great woman. Damn, bro. Damn, bro. You, My God. You see what I'm saying? These pro-blacks avoid, you know, they act like they hate white folks. They act like these brothers just love white women. Let me just speak for myself. I don't hate anybody. I don't hate white people. I don't hate anybody. You shouldn't hate anyone. I'm aware of the racist element and I detest that section. But I don't waste my energy or brain cells hating one group of people or another. There's nothing to gain from it hating an entire race of people. I assume the best of all men and women, and I prepare for the worst. That's just being realistic. Because you know it exists, and you don't know who you're going to run into. But why would you run around waiting for opportunities to just, you know, talk bad about white women for something that black women do too? More so. These blackity blacks and these black women couldn't wait to come out the woodwork and say, see, dating that white woman is what got you. So in effect, they're letting you know how they really feel about these folks. But here's the thing. It's hard enough focusing on focus, me focusing on me being the best version of myself. And that same goes for everybody, as opposed to wasting energy, hating people you don't know, or at least proclaiming that you hate people you don't know. 
Either way, you're not going to do anything about it. These same pro-blacks, right? Pro-blacks and these lovely ladies. You complain about the white man system. But then you don't want to give up the benefits from it. What do I mean? We are all victims of this system, family. And so if you're living in a white society, you're going to interact with white people, and then eventually you're going to be dating white women. Same goes for women. They're going to be black women. They're going to be dating white, white men. My preference for you all is to date people of African descent. I will get there in a minute. But I just want to talk about the hypocrisy in the black community. You complain about the system. That system that push you, tw- pushes you towards miscegenation or integration. Yet you flaunt the success in the system that, bene- that, that you receive. But here's the thing. The benefits of living in this system also come with conditions. And those conditions have conditions. You act like white, a black man dating a white woman is the worst thing ever, and vice versa. Our brothers really don't care. I've noticed that. But white, black women act like black men dating white, white is the worst thing ever. You act like you hate these white folks, ladies, but you work with them and they lead you around. I mean, here's what you got to understand, and I want you pro-blacks and you black American women who express so much vitriol towards white women and Latino women and Asian women, whoever. After 400 years of slavery, your current situation right now as it is in 2023, this is a choice. Most of you choose to stay. That's why I told black American people three or four years ago on YouTube when I first got here and 10 years ago on Facebook, Y'all the whitest black people on the, in the planet. Y'all like being here. And no one can take you seriously. You complain about white women. You complain about white women dating black men. Yet you want to date these white men. And you want to stay here in this country. And let me tell you something else about white women. Specifically these white women, these white feminists. And actually, you pro-black men. Both of y'all complain about the white men, but neither of y'all will leave the white man's infrastructure or build your own. We know that white woman ain't going nowhere. And I see all these pro-blacks. That's why anytime somebody tells me they pro-black or they blackity-black, I'm always looking at them with a jaundice eye. Because it's these same ones talking about pro-black they dressing like Black Panthers. They're equating them. They got the dreadlocks. They got the black fist in the, with the necklace on it. And they're at the Starbucks drinking lattes with Becky. My man King PB said the Black Manosphere just handed the whip to Cynthia G and bent over and said, go on, girl. <laughs> right. You, you, you want this infrastructure. You like this system. That's why you're not going nowhere. You just bitch and complain about it. And some of you all are trying to play stupid. Well, what benefits do we get from white si- the white system? Water. The white man sends water to your house. He b- builds your house. He grows your food. You get your welfare checks and your food stamps, your social security card. White daddy provides all of this for y'all. Hell, even some of y'all immerse yourself in it even further. You got your Nike, your Gucci, your Louis Vuitton, your jewelry. All this comes from white folks. You don't believe me? Let the white man do something to the water. Look at all these black people in Flint, Michigan, still begging the white man to clean their water. Hell, this 5G cellular system that we're using right now, on you in this whole entire conversation on YouTube, white folks did this. White folks maintain it. And of course, brothers, one of the benefits that you love flaunting, that all-powerful white pussycat, that white woman. Let me, I want you to understand that if you're dating a white woman, she's going to have a social advantage over you. I want y'all to hear me very carefully. In this system that we live in, you brothers who decide to date, well, I look, man, again, I'm going to tell you. My preference is that you black men date women of African descent. That's my preference. Whether she 
West Indian, Black American, African, Afro Latina, uh, wherever. I, that's my preference. And now you're starting to understand why. Because in a system like this, a system that's dominated by white folks, run by white folks, they're going to look at her and always give her the benefit of the doubt. She's always going to have a social advantage over you. What do I mean by that? Let me sum it up like this. I tell my sons, even before they even conceptualize uh, dating, little fellas they were, I said, that white, white, a white woman can tell a lie that everybody will believe. You can't, because they're going to naturally believe her. Okay, in this system that we live in. Because their social status is high. But what you see is they never have smoke for somebody like Chad, Chad Wheeler. Y'all remember him? The football player that beat up his black girlfriend? Remember that guy? You ain't heard nothing about it. But you still hearing about Ray Rice. Michael Irvin didn't even do anything but have a conversation with a woman in a, in a hotel uh, parking lot, a uh, hotel lobby. And he's still still catching smoke. And the reason is because in this society that we live in, white people, white women, white men have a higher social status than, than people of color, and specifically, especially blacks. And I find it crazy that American black women, they champion this false character, Olivia Pope. And they go crazy with support of black women dating white men, or even non-black men in this society that we live in. You got to understand what we're dealing with, okay? We live in a society, a society where there's a lot of white people who get mad when you're doing better than them as a black person because they recognize that they created and maintained the system. And it's a subconscious thing with them. They know they have an advantage. So when you do better, it creates jealousy and rage within them. And they will often lash out and destroy us and destroy our things and our accomplishments. In hell, our history, they'll distort it. Look at all the towns that we had around the United States that have been destroyed in the early 20th century by jealous white folks. Tulsa, Oklahoma. They used the predicate of somebody did something to a white woman to come over there and destroy millions of dollars worth of black accomplishment. And basically, black wealth just went up in smoke. Same thing for Rosewood, Georgia. The pretext was, hey, something happened to a white woman. A Rosewood, was it Rosewood, Florida? Or Rosewood, I think it was Rosewood, Georgia. Wasn't it Rosewood, Georgia? I don't think it was Florida. I think it's Georgia. Either way, the predicate was what? Y'all did something to a white woman. So we're going to come over here and make all this black wealth go up in smoke. So it might be Rosewood, Florida. My bad, y'all. Because I knew they, they end up, a lot of the people end up going to Gainesville. And I know that's in Florida. This is what you're dealing with. This is the society we live in. Hell, they'll even dig up black men to destroy them when they can. Look at MLK. They're trying to say he was a cheater. Ten years ago, they was trying to say Malcolm X was part of the Rainbow Coalition. Hell, once they found out Jesus was black, they decided, well, we're going to get rid of this Christianity thing. Look at that. Look what happened once Jesus became black. <laughs> Look at what happened. Ain't that something? Y'all with me? Let me say this. Stolen people on the stolen land will never have peace. And that's why I'm happy that brothers are beginning to travel and go overseas so you can see you know, yeah, you in the eye of the storm here, and it might be rain everywhere, but it ain't as bad as it is right here.
But the epitome of success is not whiteness or standing next to whiteness family. That's what I want y'all to understand. And we've had a lot of this here in YouTube over the past couple of weeks. That young girl, Miss Pearlie, Miss Ann, all the, these influential YouTubers, y'all just gravitated to that white girl and she let y'all down. You went over there praying to the white vagina, that porcelain princess, that mayonnaise monarch. Huh? Y'all went over there praying. And she let you, didn't they? She let you down. Y'all run behind white women. Y'all run by, y'all just run up behind. I don't get it. It's like y'all think reparations are gonna get paid by white vagina. And you black women too. Look at what that white woman did. She came in here and defied it. The whole YouTube thing. All the black YouTubers in a ray. It's in their arms. Y'all got a civil war behind that white woman. Think, look what you did. It's an odd love hate relationship that black Americans have with white people, both the men and the women. You're so easily divided. You're such a weak people. You got motherfuckers out here shucking and jiving. Like when that white women, when white women come around. One white woman said, yeah, come on, my bro. Y'all just running over there, man. All a white man has to do is give a black woman a confidence and she just, <laughs> She just as moist as the morning, uh, the morning dew. And you brothers, you got a morbid lust for white women. And I get it. Our women are a bit caustic and manly right about now. But there are other women around the world you can choose from. And you run after these, these white queens. I don't really get why you brothers are so into white women. I, I really honestly don't get it. And I'm not knocking white women. I know there's some beautiful white women. But under the circumstances, all that you may have to lose. Again, a white woman can tell a lie that everybody's going to believe. And I just told you earlier that when white folks see you doing good, they get jealous of you. And I know you like their things. You like their Gucci and their Louis and their white women. But when they see you with that woman, there's a natural proclivity to, to want to, you know, put you in your place. And so you're opening yourself up for extra scrutiny. Why not just get you one of these African women? You skip past the Afro-Latinas and all the East African women and West African women to go get you a white woman who's been setting us up for centuries. And here's the crazy thing, family. Hear me out. And I'm not pro-black. I am not pro-black. I'm not one of these fake-ass pro-black. I'm not that guy. I'm just a realist. Nobody, and, and when I say that, nobody even wants white women like that. Especially these white women in America. They're trying to be like black women with the attitudes. Any man with sense, white men included, are looking for foreign women who are well-mannered and respectful, witty, smart. Hell, they don't even have to speak English at this point, as long as they fit and feminine. The real mistake Jonathan Majors made, the real mistake, y'all want to hear the real mistake he made, was having a Western woman as a girlfriend. Because he's too high profile and he had too much to lose. Are y'all with me? Y'all mad at me? Let me know. Let me know. Matt, let me run a commercial. I'll be right back. Y'all, y'all let me know if y'all mad at me. I need to know. 63% of youth suicides are from single mother homes. 90% of homelessness and runaway children 
are from single mother homes. You can't homes. put that on the mother. 85% mm -hmm. of no. children who show behavioral disorders are from single mother homes. 80% of rapists with anger problems are from single mother homes. 71% of high, high school dropouts are from single mother homes. 70% of youths in operated institutions are from single mother homes. 80% of all the youths that are in prison are from single mother homes. This shows that boys and girls need both their mother and their father. And I, I will tell you as a father, I know from raising my son that he needs both me and his mother. All right, welcome back to the bro. I know y'all mad. I know y'all mad. That's why y'all ain't making no donations. I know. Hit the number one button if you, you hit the number one button. I don't care if you're mad. That's why they call me Uncle D. I'm you stuck with me. I'm still your family. You stuck with me, baby. You you can get mad. I'm just asking you questions. Why do y'all run up behind white folks like that, fam? It's not a good look. Have some self-pride. You understand? I'm going to put the link in the chat room. I ain't finished with y'all yet. The link is in the chat room. Y'all can come on and start filling up the, you know. Y'all can come through. Start filling it up. But here's the thing. Yeah, be mad. I don't care if you're mad. You need this conversation. It's a, it's not a good look. You let one white girl come in here and destroy the whole black manosphere. A man, black man swimming said, keep cooking, Uncle D. Y'all leave them white women in that pork alone. <laughs> right. Yeah, but think about it. And as I said before the commercial break, the real mistake Jonathan Majors made was dating a Western woman and having her as his girlfriend. Okay? It's too much to lose. You know she's going to get jealous. Apparently, she got mad because he was talking to some black woman on the phone. And she felt a little insecure, decided, that, I don't know what happened specifically, but apparently she tried to grab his phone and was smacking him up, and he defended himself and got up off of him, and, you know, in the back of a cab. You see what I'm saying? That's a, basically what I can gather from that, uh, that uh, text message that was sent out. You got too much to lose. That's too much liability there. Get your passport. Ignore these Western women when you got money like that. Hell, it's gotten to the point, man. I shit. I walk in the door. I'm not looking at none of these women out here. I'm not paying attention to choosing signals. I don't give a damn. And let me tell you something else. Where all the white dudes at? I know I got a few white dudes up, and I want you white dudes to hear me. The white man's greatest weakness. You know what his greatest weakness is? Type this in the chat room. The white man's greatest weakness is his white woman. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yep. The white man's greatest weakness is his white woman. Because all this luxury and good living has just made them silly and disloyal. That's what it's done. They'll actually lay down with the opposition. How you going to go lay down with the people we've been oppressing for four, 500 years? That's a foolish woman right there. And white men know it. That's why they're abandoning them. But see, he can afford to do that. What do I mean? He can afford to make a decision like that because there's a difference between black and white people. There's a different power dynamic. There's a different social dynamic. Black, white men can date black women. They have a higher social status. They can do that. But for you, brothers, it's dangerous. That's kind of basically what I'm getting at. It's dangerous. Even for you to interact with, like, on this YouTube thing. Y'all see I got Miss Ann up there? You see, I got her up there. <laughs> Don't leave us. Y'all making her mad at us. And she just constantly disrespecting you and your people. Hell no to reparations. Slavery was overrated. You know all that stuff. 
See, there's a difference, and I'm gonna say this, and I got a couple of people uh, coming through. Y'all make sure y'all hit the hit. Come on through. Uh, you know the mon- the fundamental difference is black people didn't systematically oppress and enslave white folk. Okay, because of the color of their skin. Right, we talk a lot of shit, but we don't have the power to oppress them. Okay. We don't run the judicial system like that. We don't run the court systems. We don't uh, create the, the majority of jobs. Okay. There's a different power dynamic. White man can sleep with KK Keisha and have zero feelings. Neither hate nor love. He he just a toilet to her. Or, or she's just a toilet to him. On the other hand, black men and black women, we strive to be with white folks. We strive to sit next to them. That's what happens when you see yourself as an inferior people. Y'all chase these women. Look at all these black women talking about they hate light-skinned women. Look at all these black men. I got more Negroes on my page telling me I'm biracial. My daddy is black as hell. And my mama was a sharecropper in Mississippi. But here's the crazy thing I want you Negroes to understand. That girl you got, that dude you running after, you hate these, if you hate these light skinned folks so much, stop making them. Because every day you checking your babies to see if they got that mayo complexion, that good hair. And you act like that's not self hate, because that's exactly what it is. And that's why you can have a Miss Pearly things come through and divide the whole manosphere. That's why you can have. A black, the so-called black manosphere. That's why you can have a young white girl call the police, and the black women side would happy to put put the black man in jail, even if he's innocent. This is what we're dealing with. Nevertheless, the link is in the chat room. I want to see what you guys want to do. In the meantime, we're gonna run a commercial. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. Speaking of white folks, Prism has come to me with something. So. Everybody, please listen. She's going to be talking at length, but this is extremely important, I feel. So with that said, uh, Prism, you have the floor. Hey, everybody. I don't know if everybody's aware of what's going on in um, YouTube. Are you aware? If you are aware of the situation with the attorney, can you please put a one in the chat, please? Yeah, everybody put a one in the chat if you know what, what person we're talking about. If you don't... Um, Basically, we have a lawyer who's positioning himself to be the next Kevin Samuels. But Kevin Samuels, while people would make fun of him and stuff, wasn't that dangerous. This guy, if he has his way, is going to be. Um, this this guy's a problem, and it's something that needs to be addressed. Hi, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast. My good brother, Mr. Allen, in here. It took me a minute to land this rocket ship, but I think the brothers understand where I'm coming from, bro. Uh, you know, you can't be out here kissing white ass and then get and, and wanting to stay in this system and then get mad at the repercussions. It's like playing in the pig style. You mad because you got hog shit on you. You see what I'm saying? If you're going to be in this system, you're going to end up dating some white women. If you're going to be in this system, you're going to end up benefiting and taking some L's from this system, especially as black men. Like, it, it, and you choose to be here at this point. You see what I mean? But go ahead, brother. What are your thoughts on the conversation? Man? I think you're absolutely, absolutely right. But um, I got to say, like, salute to you and the panel, the chat. But I think as a people, we we have a thing that's hardwired into us. We, we want a white saber. Very bad. Very bad. And we don't care at this juncture if it's a male or female. But if you call 
certain individuals out on that, then they in turn they 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 get upset. But yeah, nah, there ain't no white Jesus coming to save. No, not at all, not at all, man. It, it, and and the thing is, it's it's so much to deal with. You you can't really deal with it on a podcast, but it's shameful what this one white girl has done to the so-called black manuscript. It's just shameful. You got people who have been speaking in the, I mean, we just reverted back to, we just reverted back to goddamn Kunta Kente and this Negro shit. I mean, it just went straight back to the plantation. We got a good mass over here. How dare y'all? She going to take us to the promised land. That's basically what we see. Uh, Mr. R. Payne, welcome to the broadcast. What would you like to add, sir? Hey man, thanks for letting me up, man. I've been watching your channel uh, for a while. Um, listen, I, I'm my whole thing is I'm very disappointed in Black Manosphere altogether. Mm-hmm. That's nothing really to do with uh, just pearly things or the sisters that have come after. I, I think if we have a Black Manosphere, and the whole pur- one of the purposes for it is for Black men to grab their Johnsons, stand up with their back straight move forward and fix our situation the best way we know how. Mm-hmm. So that whole thing with Pearly and the way we reacted is just absolutely disgraceful. We got, we got content creators at each other's throat because of her. Uh, isn't it the same way they infiltrated the Panthers and everybody else? They threw a white woman out there or, or some missionaries or whatever. And we're falling right into that trap. Now here's, I, I listened to a lot it was of done people. so easily. <laughs> That's the thing, like she, she, it was just done so easily. Like it was it that easy? Let me let me just kind of land this for a second. And here's mm-hmm. where I, here's where I have a little smoke for the black women. Okay, I listen to a lot of the black female content creators, and I like what they have to say to try to straighten up black women. However, if they say they're for the black manosphere or getting men back in the right position. They're also trying to tell us how we should react. And we need to ignore them too. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. You don't tell us how we react or else you're calling us a coon or this or that. How is that different than a 304 using sign language? You know, mm-hmm. so I don't want I don't I don't think we should listen to any of these, any of them. Well, you know, when they're telling the women what to do, that's good. I don't I don't talk to women. I just talk to you guys and I just I just try to reinforce, hey, you're free men, live your lives. That's kind of just rock and roll. That's my main thing. But you know, <laughs> just, my thing is, man, like, you know, it, it's just so disappointing. It's such a weak Yes, thing. it is. Very disappointing. That's my problem. And then when I see this thing jump up with, with Jonathan Majors, on one hand, they say, Oh, you shouldn't have been dating that white woman. And then come to find out she was lying. Oh, that white woman out- outsmarted you. It's always the black man's fault. You understand? Then you got a situation where this, this girl shoot a, a child's father. It's the black man's fault that he got killed. I guess, you know, his chest wasn't strong enough to withstand that bullet. You see what I'm saying? That's why we need to, that's why we need to kind of think a little bit different about everybody who's not, you know, the people who are trying to infiltrate our spaces, whether mm-hmm. they are black skin or white person or anybody else, yeah. because you know, nobody has our best interests in mind but us. Now, now my problem with, with Jonathan Majors is, you know, listen, man, you're at the top of your game, man. Your discernment level has to be a little bit better. That's the only thing I got. It's got to be a little bit better. Now, who knows you're going to have a chameleon or not. But it just has to be, I don't care if it's a white girl or whatever it is, but it seems that how are you going to get in a pickle with a chick who is so easily uh, going to, Gonna destroy your life. That that, that 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 white vagina. That's that power. That porcelain pea stone. That 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 mayonnaise muff kitten. That's what got him. Anyway, let me ask you a question, you know, though, brother. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. You don't think God. that a sister could do that to him too? Hell yeah. That's what uh, oh, okay. I spent half the conversation talking about this. So, so the thing is, you got black women saying, "See, that's from dating a white woman." I'm gonna say no. Y'all do it more than anybody else. No doubt. It's a Western woman thing. It just so happens to be in this particular country, which is dominated by white folk and white, you know, that white women have a higher social status. So you stand nearly no chance of getting off. You might have a chance if a KK Keisha says something <laughs> about you. But then when that white woman comes up and cries foul, your whole town going to get burnt down. 
Shit, anyway. the cops don't even want her to retract. It seems exactly. like the cops don't even want her. They, they're, they're trying to say, you can't retract this. You put them out there. Yeah. We got this. Nigga. We yeah, gonna... That's what they saying, man. And so yeah. the thing is, I'm just telling y'all, brothers, be careful. Recognize where you are. You're behind enemy lines. Don't get to the top of your game and get, get played like that. And uh, but 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 again, let me go to Alvin because Alvin is is Alvin as a, as an observer. You're observing this situation. You got the blackity black YouTubers attacking the the middle of the road YouTubers for having that white bringing that white woman in our myths. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then and, and then the the, the the middle of the road YouTubers who want to be friends with everybody. Hey, you know she's okay. People are people. You know, you know, them people are people and, you know, we got all, you got to love each other. They like, you're just being unreasonable. You're a race baiter. And I'm like, all y'all look bad. This should be a non sequitur. At some point, somebody should have just flipped the switch and switch, switch and say, let's move on. But see, now we got this Jonathan Major situation and it's all coming from the same source. You Negroes love white people. As much as you say you don't like them and you don't like the oppression that you have to deal with, you Negroes love white people. Y'all love them to death. I want all the people, all the white people in the chat room to know that these Negroes here in America love you dearly. They do not want to depart from you. They want to be with you forever. They want to live next to you. Okay. They want to, they want you to fly their planes and build their cars, make their clothes. Okay. They want you to give them contracts so you can be the favorite Negro. You see, they want that. I've been telling these Negroes to get on the plane, get your YouTube, go get on the plane and go get a passport. Half the Negroes are saying, oh, no, no, don't leave. And the other half, it's, it's terrible. And all you're doing is just basically going over there to see some black people, but they don't want to leave. And they don't want you putting pressure on them to leave. Alvin, why do these black people, why do they have they, their lips attached to the butt cheeks of the of these white folks, like why are they is are they super glued on or is this a gorilla glue thing? Tell me, tell me. Go ahead, Al. Salute to you, Uncle D. Uh, yes. Panel in the chat. Um, it is that extra super duper strength gorilla glue. Damn. And uh, what what I'm realizing, man, what we have is a lack of comprehension. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lack of understanding. Um, we had, we came through a couple of, we've had, we've had a couple of, um, breakthroughs and we're realizing, or I'm coming to the realization that over in the motherland, over in the other continent, mm -hmm. they like, they, 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 they bend the knee to white folks too. And, oh, you and, love, love white people. Y'all and, love and, white people. And so, so do the ones, them. so do the ones in Britain and so on and so forth. Well, what mm -hmm. I'm realizing, Uncle D, is that our brand of black people the ones on this panel, the ones we're speaking with, mm -hmm. are the most disruptive. Are the ones that don't. No, no, y'all love me. white people too. Don't don't let yourself off. I used you to. Be I, was, I, 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 I am. You got I the am, white man's hat on right now, and the white man camouflage. I, I am. I am a. a I'm a using the white man's microphone. A, a recovering. I'm recovering. No, uh, y'all love the white man. Don't get it. I twice. just got the super glue on myself. You. But but what I I'm saying you. is what I'm saying is that I think um. It took it took me getting my ass whooped a couple of times. I can't lie to you. Um, the white man be, whooped your ass. Man, I didn't have the white girl call the cops. I didn't oh, had the man. the white man screw me out of a job. I mean, you know, we we've done it. You know, because we act in good faith as black men. We do. Somebody, somebody, it, Alvin. They say you shave your mustache for Miss Miss Miss, Miss Pearly. No, I don't. I don't. I don't mess with. I don't mess with Miss Pearly. I've been since I've been on the internet thing. I've been. I've stayed over on this side of the internet with yeah. us because I've just kind of wanted to keep it that way personally. But uh -huh. I understand. I understand that. You know, again, I've had a couple of higher level conversations with a bunch of guys that are like, why don't you guys just want to we got to build up the the, the group and you got to mm -hmm. network and so on. And I'm like, look, man, here's what's going to happen. They're going to build up their well, network. Man. There's more of them and then they're going to leave you behind. That's what's going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, at yeah, the end we, of the day. But oh, that's cool. And, and, and my man P money is in here and Gerald, <laughs> the white. Yeah. And, the, and I don't want you white ladies to get off the hook either. I, want, I mean, you black lady, I want y'all to hear me. Y'all, when them babies are born, y'all looking at the tips of them ears to see if them babies gonna come out dark skin or like you touching that baby here. You looking at them eyes and one of them blue eyes are gonna turn brown like the rest of us Negro. We know y'all. Y'all, y'all got a whole movement online called Swirl. 
Y'all trying to swirl it up. You trying to get rid of as much of your blackness as you can. You Negroes love white people, man. Y'all love them. Y'all love them. Y'all want to go to their parties. Y'all talk about mayonnaise all the time. You putting mayonnaise on your pork chops and your collard greens. Y'all love them. You love them. You are, you are. You are. This is who you are. This is who you are. And that white woman came up in here. That white woman came up here. All she had to do was eh, save me. And all you Negroes came to her rescue. Y'all did. Yeah, you did. I saw you. I saw you. I saw what you did. Even the Negroes that are attacking her. They ain't they using the white man system to attack her, ain't they? You see what I'm saying? You need this white man. You can't do nothing. You a handcuff. But anyway, my man P Money, my brother, -Money. my brother from another mother. Talk to me, brother. Why hey. is it? talk to me? You, know, you, got the, hey. you got the white man's earphones on right now. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, you know, Go ahead, I, I came in, I came in, Dennis, specifically mm -hmm. to say. You got your white woman too? Because you know. Go ahead. You let's know, talk, I, let's I, talk I, about I, that later. Go ahead. <laughs> let's hear it. I Go can ahead. understand the obsession Americans have with their women. The mm -hmm. obsession. And what I need to say here is that I think it was it was a comedian, a white woman comedian on Joe Rogan who was saying this. White women wanted power. They are obsession. They seen they can take over this country, mm -hmm. and they are not. They are not afraid to throw their men under the bus. Mm -hmm. They are not afraid to destroy their men to achieve that. They wanted that power, and they know their men are the weakest link holding the position in the. The global power economy. That's Man, the, don't the look, most look. convenient way they can achieve that. And let, uh, I, I let me tell you, thing. you just you what you are what you're analyzing is female nature because our women think we're the weakest link too, and they'll throw us under the bus too. And what's I gonna mean, happen? The more Africa gets wet, I know you're Nigerian. That's where your family's from. The more yeah. Nigeria gets. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? The more technology, the more available Western technology eyes. becomes, the more you're going to see those Nigerian women throwing y'all under the bus, too. It's about, see, feminism is a convenience of first world living. And the more, the less women need you, the more they'll show you they don't need you. That's all we're dealing with over here. These broads got it easy. They can go to the grocery store. They can call 911. They got their little baby bins. They can ride to work. They get their seventy eight thousand dollars a year. They get their free drinks. They they get they got it going on. So of course they can say they don't need men. Of course they can treat it like shit. I'm gonna talk to the white dudes again. I want the white, and I know they've been dipping in our black business. So I'm gonna dip in some of their white business. Normally well, I don't rip over in the white folk business, but the white man knows that his woman ain't shit. He been knowing that since she came up with no fault divorce. He been knowing that since she came up with. With the whole child support system, he she's been taking his children from him like the since the nineties. Since I like our black women have been taking them from my these white men are deleting themselves left and right. They know she's the weakest link. White, I'm talking about white dude. I've been listening to this internet thing and I've been hearing the MGTOWs and all this stuff for the past 13, 12, since well, 10 years now. And I hear what they're saying. They going through the same shit. It's female nature. And it's this is what we're better. dealing with. We're dealing worse. with female nature. It's just our women are a little bit more aggressive. But now you got white women doing the same shit that black women have been doing: calling the police, uh, goddamn, uh, putting people in jail. Look at these. Look at look. Do some examination. They don't broadcast their stuff like they do ours, but it's happening. White men are pissed. They recognize their women are ain't shit. You see what I'm saying? Western women are spoiled. White the white woman is the most spoiled human being that has ever existed on the planet. Facts. And the black women are right behind them. You see what I'm saying? Facts. So don't, it's not a, it's, 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 so here, the thing is, when I see black women, it's really when I see black women talking shit about what this white woman did, I see hypocrisy. Cause that's, as we say, the pot calling the kettle black. You bitches do the same goddamn thing. Calling the police on people. Getting them in trouble. It's dudes right here to tell you that. You see what I'm saying? You you uh, do it all. White women being violent towards their men. They do the same shit because they can get away with it. 
So, you know, you'll see it'll be there in about 30 years. Let that oil money kick in. When they start getting all the flying car, them bitches going to give y'all the blues. And they strong, too. I done seen them Nigerian women. They got them big calves. They, they got that low center of gravity and shit. They going to be like, ah, hitting up on them in the job. And, you know, y'all some slender brothers. Them bitches is built. Bam. Oh, gonna happen. Anyway, my man, Gerald, hey, a.k.a. Hey, hey, man. Can I say, can I say to the brothers that are going overseas getting their passport, mm-hmm. when you do Try going to countries where the women don't speak English. That's a good start. English is not the uh, proper yeah. language. Yeah, that is that is slow the feminism down, but it ain't gonna yeah. stop it. They train. They it's got Google Translate. Yeah, but let me get to my man Gerald real quick. Bit. Gerald, yeah, I need yourself, man. I, I you was over there, but I seen you, bro. I seen you. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, say it, bro, and then, you know we 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 getting where we trying to get on this page. Hey, well, listen, tonight. listen, nephew. Go ahead, brother Gerald. What would you like to add? This is a okay. grown-ass conversation we have. Right, 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 right. Well, check this out. Yeah. If they don't know themselves, they will never find out who they are because you said once Jesus went black, which basically the mm. Jesus symbol you got is a man named Caesar Bojé, who was homo, not to mention killed his wife, blah, I don't blah, know blah. What blah. Was, but what I do know is the minute Jesus became a black man, Christianity began to fall. That's what well, I you, well, It was I all a game. Once Jesus returned black, they was like, no, nah, we don't want that. And that, and hey. that goes to the conversation where I was talking about how, um, you know, how white folks in this society, they dig our, our heroes up and do it. And so what you think is going to happen when you dating that white woman and you a black dude? Dude, yeah, they, they the same. On your ass. But they're the same, though, because no. the basically it's all about power, because there was a, a, a pale face woman who said that they never had f- femininity. They said they needed makeup. They said that the sisters always had the feminine, beautiful yeah, self. Nobody's but, complaining about how black women look naturally. But do. But it's, it's complaining about the beauty of black women in their natural form. But remember, beauty comes from that. But they're so beautiful that, that their arrogance you can look at a beautiful woman, and as soon as she opened up her mouth, within two seconds, she has just messed up the fantasy. That's something that black women do. They are great looking. Let them open up their mouth, and you hear all that shit coming out of them. Man, your yo, yo shit be like Pac-Man. Boop, it just goes down yeah, but, because but, but, their see, energy the, is bad, see, the man. The thing is, what I'm saying is, the thing is, no men, black men are, have never complained about black women's beauty in their natural form. You see what I mean? But see, our, our ladies, they love whiteness so much. They want light skin babies. They want to look white. That's why they get the weave. That's why they get the skin bleaching. It's a sickness. But see, here's the thing. We won't leave this society alone. Mark, Malcolm uh, X, Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey told us you got to separate. And now we're seeing the effects of not I'm listening not to what our leader said. That's you true. I mean? You're going to keep true. having black men who interact with white women go to jail. You're going to keep having black women who think black men are inferior because they're not the white men and they could just do whatever they want to to them. You're going to keep having that because this is what happened when you, when you live in a society where your social status is, is what it is. But anyway, praise God. We're going to go ahead and open up the chat. These, these niggas mad tonight. They ain't mean. They ain't <laughs> I ain't getting no contributions. You, I dare you talk about the white woman. <laughs> They mad as a motherfucker. Fuck all y'all this shit. We gonna say it anyway. God damn it. We gonna talk about it. Y'all, you got a fascination. Okay? You got a porcelain dependency. Okay? You got a you got a you got a fair fixation. Okay? You 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 got a a, a mayonnaise a, a mysticism going on up here. It needs to be dealt with. You Negroes are sick. All these smart ass Negroes on the internet have been breaking down all this shit. From yeah, man, and this is it, and monogram report, and this, that, and the other. And you can get a trigonometry question answered on this shit, but I, you can't. I can't explain why one bad built, big shouldered white woman can come up in here and break up the whole shit that we didn't have going. You see what I'm pit. saying? The white woman came in here with that white Thor sludge hammer and said, <laughs> and "All of y'all scattered to y'all corners. Are uh, we separated? The house Negroes from the field Negroes. Uh, is she from dudes, Britain? Dudes is getting transplanted. No, oh, oh, God damn it! She huh? is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just Simple like shit. TV. Shout out through. to you, bro. What? What'd you say? What did I miss in uh, Broken Blade? Go. What'd you say, bro? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm missing some, but anyway. No, it was me. I was asking, was she from Britain? Because I thought she was from Britain. No, man, she from the Midwest. She's from here. He's Get out. Grown. Okay. Oh, God. That's that homegrown whiteness. She ain't from Britain. Hold, hold on. She ain't reverberate. She said, you need roses playing when it comes to slavery. It wasn't all that. She had the white boy on there with the Mexican <laughs> last name that's from Italy. They said, hell with all you Negroes. And y'all still up in white mom. Y'all all up in the crack. Jock Carter, thank you, bro. So yeah, be mad. I don't care if they mad. They don't like it. See, here's the problem. And I'm this just open the panel up. Here's the problem. Y'all don't like me talking about it. They want to be, this is a post-racial society and you're up your racial, your race hunt. I'm just talking about you Negroes and how you are. That's all I do. I just hold hey. the mirror up and say, look, this is your ass. This is what the fuck you doing. Yeah, you dangerous, bro. You, <laughs> you, you, like you it, a dangerous. We, we, we should have sold uh, hey. we should have hold the mayo. Man, and they love that vanilla. Hey, brother's white. She's she devil hey. with temple you cleanse you. So that's what's going on. You know, we need to cleanse this whole area right quick. Let me Man. let me go yeah. ahead and Praise God. Well, the, the, the praise God. we gotta go ahead and strawberry bring. Vanilla. Let me see if we can find Black Jesus to bring him up here. Praise God. Hold on, man. We'll be here. Under the blood, Jesus cover me. Under the blood, under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus, you been cover me. Under the blood, in the morning when me wake up. And the blood that Jesus me take up And when me feel like me I go break up Put the blood from me face just like a makeup In the morning when me wake up And the blood that Jesus me take up And when me feel like me heart break up Put the blood from me face just like a makeup Under the blood Under the blood Jesus cover me Jesus you be cover me Under the blood me say me Oh, uh, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, GM said, Pearl look like Smeagol from the Lord of the Rings. Don't talk about that white girl. Y'all love that white woman. Y'all take it. Y'all are hit. 99% of y'all smash and have a little light-skinned baby with her. Now, stop lying to me. I know you, That's Negro. Right. I know y'all. A little hen dog in you. A little coat. A little motherfucker. A little Pepsi or something. Y'all hit that. <laughs> it, they'd be like, yeah, you know. Yeah, I got a little white girl. You know. I know you, Negroes. Don't lie to me. I know what you do. That's another goddamn mm -hmm. thing. Somebody's like, I'm dry stitching. I tell all you niggas be out there cheating me trying to get the lipstick off your motherfucking dick and jump in the shower before your wife <laughs> catch your ass. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because niggas is wearing, baby, order me some black drawers. I don't want them white drawers no more. Motherfucking lipstick be on there. The bitch know what you've been doing at the motherfucking strip club, fucking them fat bitches around the corner. I know what you do. You can't lie to me. See what I'm saying? I'm a nigga too. Did y'all know that? <laughs> One of y'all. But uh, anyway, my man Robert Scott B. Women said the black Jesus dad was the deadbeat. Justin Brooks, thank you so much. Uh, original man 50. Next time we make a black sandwich, hold a mail. Yeah, and, and so so here's the thing, brothers. Here's here's where we at. And I wanted to, I wanted to get a short monologue in because I wanted to lay it out, but we need a motherfucking code because we are yeah. all off code with this shit. And I'm glad I got some of my veterans in here, Mr. Al, Mr. Allen and uh, Mr. Holden. And I got some new blood up in here. And also Mr. Black Rock, my brother from overseas. You're going to have to represent all 54 countries in Africa right now. <laughs> we need a motherfucking code. We are off code. If all it takes is for one white woman to come in this motherfucker with that white lightning and that, 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 to break up all our shit. <laughs> I'm not building a motherfucking thing with y'all. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm hell my it takes one white woman. And this uh -huh. ain't even like, you know, a fine white woman. This is a really average. She even say she pretty average. You see what I'm saying? So what is the code? Where where did we violate the code here? My man elevated engineers. I can't lie, I was still knocking down. I just wouldn't tell him. I know because you Negroes got low standards too. So you don't go around the horn. What's, but come on now, you know, for real though. You know, for real, for real. Can I throw? Let me let me throw out some. If, let me throw out real quick. Code, what does the code say? What's I went the on. I, I went on Bernard. I think Bernard Riley's show. And I, get, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who that is, but well, he, he, he's a brother. He's a brother on on there. And I told him, I said, listen, I said exactly what you just said. When we talk about the manosphere. I said, well, why don't we define? Yeah, I'm, yeah, what kind of, what, I'm I'm not part of the black man. No, no, okay, forget about manosphere. 
Hold on, hold on, they, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. They put me out of the manosphere back in January, so I gracefully resigned. So I don't want to speak ill of the brothers who are still there. God bless them. I wish them well. Okay. Nevertheless, somebody said, white pussy got me, Uncle D, in the summer of 05. Yeah, it got all you Negroes. But, but, but anyway, let's proceed. What, did, what happened? Let me, let me just say, forget about manosphere. Forget about that term, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I'm saying, can we define what we're trying to accomplish as black men? It doesn't have to be a complete definition. It don't have to be long. I mean, what if we had planks? What What's would they the Are you saying what is it's, the objective? Are we trying to achieve anything? No, no, not everybody's trying to achieve the same thing. That's the thing. That's, that's what I'm because saying. because for for like Uncle D, I don't think money. You're not chasing dollars. I mean, and they're nice to mm. have, but you're not here chasing money. No. I'm not here chasing money. It's nice to have, but I'm not here chasing money. There's a lot of people that are out here chasing clicks, and they'd rather be you know uh, buddied up with the the million person mayonnaise than they would everybody else. This yeah. on this side of the internet is a slow grow. There's not that many of us, right? right? It's a small corner of the internet. Most of her, I don't know, I don't, I, I have a hard time believing that she's got a million plus black men following her. It's I have not. a hard time believing that. It's not. Hey, uh, Uncle D, if I miss his something, hey, here's, yeah. here's where the violation is coming in. Never trust men who are not getting none. Who make of these brothers are thirsty. Say it again, bro. Are, Say it again. Thirsty. Come back. I, uh, say, go ahead. Come closer. Never trust men that are not getting none. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too okay. much of these brothers are thirsty, and the number that are not getting none keeps increasing. It keeps getting larger and larger. So mm. what is the code? My prescription is, brothers, get your passport, go overseas, so your royal oath, find you a woman that will settle your brain below. So you are not thinking with the brain upstairs. Okay. A lot of these men will sell you out pussy, pussy. For, for, for 15 minutes of jail. Yeah. It doesn't even matter what it looks like. It is yeah. sad. It is sad, sad, sad. You know, I've been in the United States since 2007, and I swear to God, I cannot tell you how many times brothers, American black men, have lost their job, a high-profile position, over some trying to get some jelly. Yeah. Something that is not even desirable. Yeah. I you know, brother... So, right so let me chasing tails. You know, it, let me let me summarize bad. what our pain said and what Alvin Alvin said. Our pain said, "What's our objective?" Alvin pointed out that everybody here on YouTube, the guys, we have different objectives. I'm not here chasing the money. I appreciate y'all giving the donations. It lets me know I'm headed the right path. And of course, I want to get paid for my motherfucking time. I ain't a fucking slave. But nevertheless, I'm not doing it. I'm okay with slow growth. It's other people who have this as their primary source of income. You see what I mean? My man Patrick said, you got to watch out for dudes who want female validation because they don't get much of it. So anytime a woman validates them, then, you know, they, they, they gravitate towards that. That's, they need that. They need that female validation, especially when you got somebody, a white woman, because we know the traditional relationship that black folks have had with white people in this country. So they gravitate towards whiteness like that they want that social status so if they can't be white they want to stand next to white you understand so those are three good points i mean we we're gonna narrow this down hopefully we got it we got about 30 or 40 minutes my man original 50 said lady thor pearly struck at the black hemisphere <laughs> with her struck struck at the black manosphere with her mighty hammer shazam <laughs> he showed this she came down and hit that black that thing and just rattled every goddamn thing. Look at y'all. Y'all been shook for weeks. Okay. Excuse so, me, if I may add. What we off code. What's the code say? Like, clearly we can't let this. You I mean, what is the rule that we need to follow so this never happens again? All of the white women had I say don't let them in the door. You see what I mean? That's what Agree. I'm saying. I'm saying you cannot speak on black issues because what's gonna happen is you start speaking on black issues. Black people aren't going to gravitate towards you. Then you're going to say some shit to let them down. And then the other people are going to say, well, give her an exception because she's white. And then the other group of people are going to say, no, nah, fuck that. 
she betrayed us. So now you got people on both sides fighting against each other. So, but all this could have been avoided if you had said, hey, you out of bounds. Just like white men don't like me telling them how treacherous they women are, that hurt their feelings. You see what I mean? Earlier when I said, I, I could sit up here and talk about the domestic violence rate in the Latino community and, and the, the amount of uh, children that are molested in the Hispanic yeah. community. Look at this. I could sit up here and do that. I could have a panel of Latino women talk about how many times Spanish poppy done hit them up beside the head. I don't do that. I may casually mention, but I don't dwell on that shit. That's disrespectful. That's not my people. You understand? Right. Same thing with white folks. I can sit up here and talk about how many pedophiles they got in they shit and how many drunks and all that shit. I can sit up here and talk about that. I don't. I can sit up here and have a whole panel of meth heads from Philadelphia who are white and explain to me why they doing what they've been doing and how their childhood was and why they don't. I could do that. I don't. That's not my business. You understand? We got, I mean, it's damn near like prison politics over, you know, and the dudes who've been to jail, you stay in your own racist business. You don't get off in other people's business, at least in California. I don't know about everywhere else. Yes. Yeah, like- but you, you mind your business because shit is better. Otherwise, you opening yourself up for a conflict. And if we need to come together and do something, we can. But see, it doesn't help when I got brothers running after these white women like this and these black women running after black uh, white men like this. You have a morbid fascination with white folks. Y'all do. Well, y'all have y'all, y'all have a more black people, it's a sickness. We have we more attracted to white folk than white folk are attracted to themselves. They've been killing each other for thousands of years. Europe, France, they've been at war, the goddamn Vikings and shit. They don't even like each other like that. But we just love them. You see what I'm saying? Like, and it's weird. It's it's weird, especially got all these intelligent people. It's weird as shit to still be dealing with this, man. We still fighting over this, man. Just think about it. You know, but but anyway, uh, Mr. Allen, you had something to say, but let me read what counselor. Mr. G. Lai said, we'll call it in, but I'm busy now, but just putting something on the board to prove not everyone mad that you're going in on the mayonnaise mate. And I'm not even going in on the white girl like that. I'm mad at us. I can't change that white woman. She's doing what's in the best interest of her people and herself. I'm not mad at her. I'm mad at us. I can't control her, but I can talk to y'all and ask y'all at least why. You see what I'm saying? RDD20, shout out to you, man. Thank you so much. And I'm not even one of these staunch pro-blacks who say don't date. I'm not, I'm not even one of them Negroes. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I just want to understand why. But, um, but and, and more importantly, at this point, what do we need to do so that we don't have this much division happen amongst us anymore? If this shit happens virtually, it can happen in, in the real world. And it's, it's all the time. Mr. Allen, go ahead, brother. Please give us some explanations. We all have had that one homeboy that was mm-hmm. tripping off of a box. And you you kind of look at him funny a little bit like, mm, <laughs> you want that box enough to start talking reckless? Bet. When it comes to white box, most Negroes get to tripping real hard because now it's a surprise. <laughs> it's the thing. I'm trying to obtain this. Like, 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 like it come with a title. That chick is human, bro. She's human. And y'all, 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 I'm out here in, in the middle of white America. They smoking drugs, bro. Like, they ain't that special. They're no, terrible. No. For real, they're terrible. They're terrible oh, like everybody else. Is every, we all human beings. But it's just fascinating. Look, man, I got white folks I'm cool with. The first person that taught me how to practice law was not my father. I learned to practice law from a little short white dude over in New Orleans. Made me great. It's crazy. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you this story, man. And and what I'm saying is, is it, I'm not hating. And that's why I pointed that out. I don't hate white folks. I don't hate anybody. I hate shit that evil people do. And what system of white supremacy, racism is evil as fuck. And if you're a perpetuator of that, you're on the wrong side as far as what my God is talking about. But the thing is, man, you know, little short, little short white dude taught me to practice law. I didn't got so good. My fiance who deals with lawyers now, cause you know, she's, a, she's like, you know, we always get these Hispanic clients and they call over and then the little, little lawyers don't know what the fuck they are doing. Little Hispanic lawyers don't know what they're doing. And I say, the reason is cause they were locked out. 
Why this is personal injury is a white man's game. You see what I'm saying? It's the it's the most lucrative form. And when I was there, that firm that I worked with, they sent me the worst of the worst cases. So I got all the shitty cases, and I learned to make money. I earned the second highest amount of money in the firm when I was working for them with the shittiest cases. You see what I mean? I remember one quarter I settled 93 cases. Now I might settle, you know, 15 in, in a three-month time period. I settled 93 of them shitty cases, which means, and I did that for three years straight. I would be there from 7 in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. You see what I'm saying? Whole point, man. And, brother, come back if you can. I know you were you're trying to get in on this, but I wanted to talk to Mr. Allen. But my whole point is, is, you know, you can learn from people. You can hate. You can learn from people. You don't have to hate them, but you don't have to be fixated with them. You see what I'm saying? What, what, what's up with the fixation? Can I, I think I, that's my problem, uh, Mr. Holden. And then, Mr. Allen, you can add in. And the floor is open, gentlemen. Why I, are we fixated? Why is it? Can, Why okay. is Go ahead. If you'll allow me. Um, Mr. Payne. Yeah. Bl black men don't read. How does that make you feel? It's disappointing. Gerald, black men don't read. How's that make you feel? Bad. That's how you hide something P from a P nogger. You, you many, they don't P find money. out. Black men don't read. How's that make you feel? Indifferent. Mr. Allen, black men don't read. How's that make you feel? Nothing. See, we've this got, is true. We, we've got, we, okay, right there, right, right there, right? Is it though? Who knows? But we've got a lot of black men in the space that degrade, we degrade ourselves. True. So if, if we keep getting these messages about ourselves that are trash messages, mm -hmm. how can we not think that the white men are better? See, I'm picking up on something. I've been realizing that a lot of these blackity blacks and a lot of these people, they perpetuate a lot of these messages that are bullshit. They're messages that are pumped into the media constantly that we've been hearing since we were kids. Black men don't read. Black men cheat. Black men this, black men that, black men this. It's not that we 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 not we're we've been taught that the white man's ice is colder, so it's no secret. It's it's not surprising that half these motherfuckers really believe it, because that's all they've been told. I read all the people I know read, but but we've heard that before. We've got some. We've got leaders in the manosphere that pump that bullshit on a regular. I've heard them say it out of their own mouths that black men don't read. So how are we supposed to have any pride or dignity in ourselves when our own leaders are the ones bullshitting us? I'm just saying. Let me let me ask a question. Let me ask you a question, Alvin. Lions can't read either, but you ain't got to tell a motherfucking lion that the hyena is his enemy. You shouldn't be over there running up behind the goddamn hyena. Yep, you know what I'm saying? I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, it is pretty obvious to me that if you fucking with a white girl and she called the motherfucking police on you, your black ass is going to jail. You see what I'm yeah. saying? That's pretty obvious to me. It's pretty obvious if the white girl say, I'm against reparations, uh, what else you say? Slavery was some bullshit. Y'all just overdoing it. And that's probably it. somebody who ain't fucking with you like that. Uh, you see what I'm saying? These so, lines, like, these how, lines how don't have no more, teeth. How many more signs do you need to realize this is not somebody you need to stand behind with your black self? And why didn't you ask the right questions before you put the stamp of approval and let her come in and speak to your people? If you had a church, Alvin, yes, sir. Okay, you had a church and there was a guest minister, and you just say, Oh, yeah, come on in, motherfucker. And then he get up on the goddamn podium and start talking about Satan is good. That's your <laughs> motherfucking fault because you let that person in your pulpit to address your flock. And so the, 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 the people who are sitting there on Sunday morning are like, damn, you let this person come address us? It's one thing if we hear this person out on the street, but if you bring her into our sanctuary and we listen to this person because you put the stamp of approval on it, that's your fault because you put the stamp of approval on it. What I'm, saying, what, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what? our pastors are the ones spreading the bullshit message. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, but ben, okay, but, but but wait a minute. But nobody but, but, brought her into the space. She came that was my question. Gate. There's no wait a minute. Let me finish. There's no gate on the space. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, and, and actually, her demographic is not mostly black. But let me just put it to this. I'm I'm. Well, let me, you you I'm, made I'm the point. I want to ask you a question on that. So you said nobody brought her into this space. How did she get in? But, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
<laughs> did our manosphere leaders put a stamp of, did, did did black people put a stamp of approval on her? Okay. Appearing in her broadcast. Yep. Let, let me let me can I, let me it's ask a question. No question. In your yep. opinion, is no, I'm not going to be a long answer. I, I'm just saying I, I, she I, came I, into I the space. Is, I think she, the answer is once people that you love and respect put the stamp of approval on somebody, I, you yeah. feel safe talking. You feel safe listening to that person. You open your ears up to that person. I, if I could just finish just this thought for a second. I, right? I know, but, I know, but you made a point, and I wanted to address that. If you got another I, point, I'm not going. I'm not going to go off that point. I still say she came into the space. She she paid some money for some folks to help her out. She didn't do it for free, and and maybe that endorsed her. I'll give you that. But the point is, we all been on this earth for a little while. I know I have been. I have not talked to a white person who said anything about slavery that elevated to the satisfaction that I thought it was. They all are like that. It's not like she said anything that any white person you talk to and you talk about slavery with them, you leave that conversation knowing that they don't look at slavery the way you did. Every white person I know, every right. single white person okay. I know. So, so the no, wait, first wait, wait, thing I'm, was, not, I'm not giving her a pass. I'm just right, saying, how can we right, be so right, strong? Right. I get it, brother. The first thing you said was that yeah, she yeah. took some interviews with some people. Kevin Samuels charges people to have consultations with them. Right, that's what and she did. Not, right? Let me finish, brother. That does not mean he puts his stamp of approval on them. The lead attorney does the same thing. That doesn't mean he puts his stamp. You want to pay me five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars to talk to you for thirty minutes? I will. You want to go out and tell people you talk to me? That's cool. That does not mean I agree with everything you said. I talked to I've talked to I've talked to hundreds of people in the past year. That doesn't mean I agree with everything they say. They pay me. I talk. You gotta let me finish, brother. You gotta let me finish, please. Brother, please let me finish, brother. Please. That doesn't mean that they put their stamp of approval on. What I'm talking about is the people that appeared on her podcast that brought her in that said, "Hey." This is person we we like this person, and it made her seem like a safe choice for us to listen to. And then she came and did what we expect white people in this society to do: advocate for themselves and their positions and their opinions. So my question is: Should we have done a better job at vetting her as leaders? And is there a, what do what do our leaders learn from this? You see what I'm saying? Like it's not a I'm not in conflict with you. I'm just trying to. But I'm going to ask you a there. question. Can I ask Go you a ahead. question? You know, who Go brought ahead, her in? I want to know that, who brought her in. Do, uh, is, fresh do and fit? I, just, you know, I mean, yeah. that's what I'm is, saying. Is, do we have who, a name? Look, let me, let me say it like this. The U, YouTube is open. That's what I okay. said. Okay, you got to let me finish, brother. YouTube is open to anyone. You got, you got racists on YouTube right now saying wild shit. Right. But they're not getting a stamp of approval from black YouTubers because... Because we like they racist, why it makes no sense to do that. But if you bring somebody in and then your people, your fans who love you and appreciate, I know that there are people who trust me and they trust my opinions. And if I say, hey, this is a good product to buy, go ahead and buy it. They'll take my word for it. And if I if they buy a product and it does something bad to them, they're gonna be looking at me like, damn dog, you you know, we holding you respond. It's no different than in a gang or a mafia. You bring a snitch in, you're responsible for the snitch. All right, I agree with that. You understand what I'm saying? So if you bring this white woman in and you didn't probably better, you're responsible for that. That's real. It's not that you, it's a free world, but you brought her in. In other words, you vouch for this person. That's oh, basically yeah. what I, I, I've said that a couple of times. It's the you said Kevin here. Samuels and those guys paid. That's they not what I said, they didn't vouch That's for That's not what I said. I said that just because they had a conversation with her, doesn't, brother. That's what he said. Y'all, you, you, what did you I hear you, but this? you're still not saying who vouched for her. I don't know who vouched for her. Okay, brother, yeah. listen, listen. I'm not saying names. <laughs> I'm not saying okay. any names. All right. All right. All right. But we all know. Yes, we do. Names. I'm gonna go on this. Once you start appearing on people's podcasts and you start, you know, basically vouching for them, then that's uh, you're, uh, you're putting a stamp of approval on them. It's common sense. People see that. You understand? And, yes, and, I got you. And I, I get that. You. And I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying, yeah. as leaders moving forward, what can we learn from that? You see, because you're wall. always gonna have Trojan horses like this. And in the in the battle of the Trojan horse, there were people that said, "Burn that shit at the gate." And there was yep. people who said, oh no, this is a peace offering. Bring it in. 
And we've seen this play out before for thousands of years. You let this person in you, you out of your goodwill and then they fuck your shit up. What can we learn from this? That's that's the whole point, because it's not it's what's done is done. But the question is, what can we learn from this moving forward? But let me do this. Counselor, Mr. G Live said Alvin is correct. I've been saying that black stereotype each other more than anyone uh, being the black men who are chasing white women, only 8% of black men and white women. Yeah, but even at 8%, so I, my whole point is that you're looking at a dis- different social status and you're basically endangering yourself. My man, Dennis, check out Sarah, Sarah Garvey video on Pearl per- Pay, her staff pittance. And <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Her on slavery and colonization. That- why y'all mad at that? I'm not fixated with that white <laughs> people. <laughs> you mad at white people for white people. Uncle, Uncle D, I, you, I you saw. Know, hold on a minute. Hold on. Okay. You're mad at white people for doing what white people been doing. That's your yeah. dumb black ass. You need some nature. validation. That's my whole point. Why are you white mad at white people for doing what's in their best interest? You, go. Going you see what I mean? That's your day. I'm not talking about, I can't change that young lady. She's supposed to fucking whoop y'all. You see a fool bumping <laughs> head. You motherfuckers out here. I, what did she just say on, on the internet the other day? I like my African Negroes because they work harder. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna she make did me richer say. than the American Negroes. She <laughs> did. Italian dudes say you fucking right. We like these niggas over here better than them niggas over there. And y'all okay. talking about that? No, we need the best slaves ever. We need the best, best slaves. <laughs> you niggas. <mad>. Okay. <laughs> That's basically, I'm like, I'm looking, see, I'll be sitting back because I, I sit back, I'm like, these niggas don't even realize. <laughs> Y'all niggas fighting over who the best slave is for this world. Oh, the slave <laughs> master. Fight Uncle D. Y'all fighting over Can who's I, the best uh, Negro slave. Uncle D, uh, she, uh, she was ahead, on a bro. panel. I'll be quick. She was on a panel. I clicked Fresh in. I'm not gonna call any names. Name, she was on a, she was on a panel on a, she was okay. on a black career. I'll say this. She was on a black yeah. creator's channel recently and there's a bunch of dudes yelling at each other with her sitting on the screen and they was and it was like mandingo fighting for her and i was oh, like what the fuck yeah, is going yeah, on yeah, i got I, I, can, yeah. I can only watch for like two minutes i had to turn that shit off i was like what she are we talking about Sally, Jesse, so, Raphael, so, for y'all. So, so, so public so we're talking about code Public disagreements with other black men, especially with with white people on the on the platform, is probably off code. I'll start there. Yeah, I agree with that. I I said that the other day. I said that the other day. Jock Carter said, "Our pain having saving Pearly for the past few days." I don't know who that is. Chancellor Palpatine infiltrated the Jedi Order and destroyed it from the inside. Life and art are similar. Yeah, you you got a Trojan horse, man. Y'all do better job at vetting. It's very rarely you see me go anywhere. I go to that little girl Shay Shardray's channel. She yeah. sing nice. You see what I mean? You don't see me running up on people's shit. It's very rarely that I have other folks. So I'll bring a young person in, like a person who's got a new channel. But you don't see me co-signing with motherfuckers because I don't want my reputation. I, t- I take very, I take care of my reputation. I, I realize how important your reputation is. You understand what I'm saying? I, I realize that. I take that very, I'm not in this to make money I'm in this to make sure. Well, let me say it like this. I got almost 60,000 black men following me. My page has a different nature than everybody else's page. Because this is, I purposely go out of my way to get rid of all the women and, and other folk. I got mostly black men. That's what makes it so poignant. That's why even though I only got 60,000, when I say shit, everybody hear it. Notice that. Every shit get reverberated throughout the internet. And that's 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 being you got a titanium tip on the end of your spear, as opposed to some brads. That's the difference between my page and everybody else's. And I'm cool with slow growth. You see what I mean? Because when I get a hundred thousand, it's gonna be a hundred thousand black men. You see what I mean? That's different. That's that's You see what I'm saying? Hard and steel over time. But uh, anyway, man, I want you brothers. Let's. We got to get some answers up in here. When are y'all gonna leave these white women alone? You know what we need to do. Lord, we gonna pray. We come to you today and ask you to help us get rid of the demonic spirit of white women that are taking over the black men that they are.
too much, let man. Let all bow here, Lord. Let the spirit of the white vagina be ridded from our lives, Lord. We ask you to, <laughs> Lord, we come down and let the mayonnaise muff kitten be removed from us, Lord. We need to, <laughs> we have to deal with that, Jesus. That porcelain pussy cat is the devil incarnate, Jesus. We ask you. <laughs> The courting us off, Lord. We don't need that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let all the people put your hands in there, Lord. Amen. Man, Dude, man. you too much, man. You are too <laughs> much. Praise Moses. Praise Moses. We free uh, now. We liberated. We liberated. We liberated. Uh, we, we, you know, uh, we liberated. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Go hey, ahead, Uncle D. Praise God. Uncle D. Uh, what yes, you think? Uh, well, let's think go, Mr. Allen. Go. go ahead, Mr. Allen. What you got to say? Most of us have not had the experience of um, laying down with a white woman. So white woman. Woo, they want it, though. They want it. And yeah. for that fantasy, they're willing to uh, man, they go fight mm -hmm. over some imaginary <laughs> virtual box that they ain't never going to get. Mm -hmm. She can give it to somebody, but it ain't she. Yeah, get over, Lord, Lord, get over. Baby, just go on, go on down to the Walmart and get you one of them big white girls with some sandals on. Praise the Lord, just get it on out your system, brother. Lord Jesus, I don't know, man. Well, but anyway, like I said, and, and P Money, you had something to say. Go ahead, brother. Go no, ahead. no, I was yeah. gonna ask you a question. Do you think uh, these brothers are gonna relapse? Oh yeah, they're gonna relapse. They need that that white girl. Ooh, they love that white woman. P money. That's they strawberry, love. strawberry vanilla. They love that white woman. They can't get rid of that white woman, man. That's <laughs> part of their being. That's part of who they is. That's part of who they are. They love white women. White women, butter Eddie biscuits, white. BMWs, Gucci. That's what they. What do. you call them? Butter yeah. biscuits? Is that what you? Yeah, call them? Butter, butter biscuits. Yeah, it's a butter biscuit. <laughs> I'm a white woman and a butter biscuit and a forty <laughs> ounce. <laughs> it's a win. Fish nuggets. If she can roll weed and fit and, and fry chicken, shit. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to learn, right? Hey, butter biscuit. That's Chris Secure, ain't it? Butter yeah, biscuit. But, oh. but what I'm saying, family, is this seriously? Just seriously, though, man. Seriously, though, man. We really, really, really got to think about, uh, and I, and it's all fun and it's all funny, you know, but this is a sickness, man. Yeah, you know, this is really a sickness, you know, and and it's it's just and like I, I always get motherfuckers making light skin jokes about me. Look, I'm a red nigga, okay. Let me explain. I'm not light skin like that. My, my daddy was black. My mama was light skin from Mississippi. My daddy was looked like Mr. Payne up here. Oh Jesus Christ. And so what I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm you know, stop trying to stop trying to disrespect me on some light skin shit, especially <laughs> since you motherfuckers are out here trying to have light skinned babies to look like me. Let me say it like this. All you black motherfuckers that got a problem with high yellow niggas, stop making them if you got a problem with them. You understand what I'm saying? Let's cut that shit out. Let's start it with that. But nevertheless, y'all stuck with me. I ain't going nowhere. Fuck all y'all. But either way, let's get back to the conversation because it's really a problem, fellas. It's, and that's why y'all see I move my show back late. I know when I'm cussing. I got to right. wait till my kids go to sleep before I can gotcha. say this shit. But, 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 but for real, though, man, like, like it's a problem, man. We let one white girl come up in here and just... And then, and then, and then this, this boy, this, this, this major's boy, he ain't learned the lesson. Leave them white women alone. Leave them white girls alone, fam. And did you know he called the cops? What? Know, it, He's the one who it. called the cops. He I is the know. one who called the cops, and when they got there, she flipped the script on him and said that he beat him. Ah, uh, yeah, he and they arrested his ass. I'm gonna call the police before you know that nigga said his masculinity is fucking. Fluid, fluid, fluid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's a solution. Um, I got. I got a solution. I got a it, solution, nephew. Here's bro. a solution. Since yeah. the banks are collapsing, which is a good thing for the men, because the men ain't never gonna stop working. I think we should take some ice cube advice and just build an invisible wall, have a small freaking door, and just keep all of these women out. Because you, I mean, right, now, we gotta right, have you, some no, in. No, 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 you're gonna have to speak. You speaking in parables and tongues. I need you to give me <laughs> exactly what you mean. That shit is too late for that. Listen, shit, you know? listen, <laughs> listen. We uh, everybody keeps saying we got a bill. 
So we all know that the banks are going to collapse. Things are going to reset. It's going to be the best time for our ass to come up. But how we, is that going to stop us from listen? listen okay, let me, let me, because because wherever economics is, them them flies come. It's like the best shit. The flies always find the shit. We need to just keep their ass out of our space. Don't speak about I our issues. I want to be in a room with a bunch of dudes, man. I, I want some women. But around. you have. But 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 I did say I did say I did say. But I did say I did say like-minded women. I did say that. So you just got to keep out these zeros and just build. Just keep going. And it's and, and we throw away the rearview mirror because what's behind us does not matter. Matter. Lay down some landmines so if they try to follow us, shit, they just blow themselves up well, and we not, just bro, keep that, moving that forward. That's too like that's too much. Work. Why can't we just say leave these white women alone? How can why can I say that? If you can say Big, that, yeah. grandma tell you that leave them white women alone. Yeah, yeah my grandmother. Girl, actually, goddamn my goddamn grandmother white. did. My grandmother yeah, did. She did tell me that goddamn white girl to my goddamn. I was goddamn. She said if she can't use the comb, don't bring her home. I remember her saying that. And now, but see, these young people, that's racism, Uncle D. You're being a racist. I'm just trying to save your black ass from going to the penitentiary. That's it. Anyway, oh. Cody Mark said he likes strawberry buttermilk biscuits. Who else we got up there? I mean, I'm just saying, man, you know. Well, and then I mean, you know, black women are as bad. They got a whole squirrel movement. You get to whooping your ass and taking your kids and put you on child support, then you're gonna be mad. But go ahead, Alvin. Go ahead. No, I mean we just have a we just have a, a like I said, we have a comprehension problem. It's just not an understanding of how things work, right? I mean, mm -hmm. to sit to okay for for a bunch of guys to be arguing about who's gonna be the best slave, right? They didn't conceptually see the problem with that, right? None of the guys on like, and, and I'm talking about this one particular you know, incidents in particular instance in particular where a group of black men can't look at the screen and see that the optics are bad, mm -hmm. right? Like they're, they're, they're yelling and screaming at each other. Mother, epa, da, 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 da. All, all everything except for a child of God. And this little white girls in one of the little boxes, like sitting there prissy and so-and-so and the host of the particular show was letting it go on. Yeah, it's a you spectacle, know what I'm saying? Man. It's a spectacle, exactly. Why are we? Why are we? Why are we okay being a spectacle? Is my problem? No, no pride, no pride, and no self-esteem. That's what there it is. About. Okay, we got to start there. We yeah. got to start me, there. Let me yeah. read. My man Jay said somebody said having a white woman is his reparations. Uh, please put this <laughs> uh, uh, I know that's what I'm dealing with. <laughs> my heart, my job, and I got to be out here defending y'all. <laughs> this is the bullshit I got to defend. Y'all a group of people that the most high gave me to defend. You see what I'm saying? This who Albert. I gotta this who I gotta defend. You see what I mean? Look at this, y'all. Y'all Go ahead. Go ahead. The reason why yeah. is because it was white box. That's all. That's why. At the mm. core of it, after all the intellectual, the schooling, the whatever, whatever, it, it's a white box up for grabs. Mm -hmm. And everybody like, ooh, ooh, me, me, yeah, no, boy. no, me, no, me. And they fighting over it, bro. Yeah. You put their cape on. Dum -dum -dum -dum. I'll <laughs> save you, white woman. That's what they did. That's, that's exactly what they did. I think that's she's an agent. And, 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 is it and embarrassing? The has it, and has it got to the point where it's embarrassing yet? It's beyond Hell yeah. Oh, way past that point. I still it's think she's a paid that. agent. I think she's an agent, man. I just see. Hey, listen, the Crimson Cure said two things. She said, "When the white man come for whatever we try to do is black, they'll send him. He gonna send a woman. She, she'll send a missionary or a white woman. Bingo. Those are the two things that, and I and agree with Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan and uh, the Honorable she, Elijah Muhammad said. Kali Muhammad said it too. But she probably yeah, got they, it from them. Yeah. 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 But, but but I mean I don't think some people know enough to be. It was embarrassing when that when I saw black people fighting over which yeah. one of you Negroes on the other side of the Atlantic makes the best way. That that was embarrassing when they missed that. Just like fight, you didn't man. you didn't just see what she did. She got you Negroes fighting over who can make me the most money. That's what that's what that white woman did. Oh no, black Americans aren't as industrious as aren't as industrious or African. My I, I just African. What did she say? My monkeys, my monkeys are better than the monkeys. Yeah, <laughs> basically, basically. Basically. Africans. Africa is not a fucking country, it's a <laughs> continent. A very diverse continent. You see what that, I mean? That, actually, that shit cut people. I swear. When she well, said I don't that, understand how y'all didn't see that she's pitting one against the other. 
And Joe I just Dan, saw Joe content creators I mean, just okay. endorse Cynthia G. Who? Ah, because who Cynthia G came out. Who did said what? Something. I saw a content creator actually endorse Cynthia G because she uh -huh. spoke against the white girl. I said, man, I said, Cynthia G. I said, shit, man. Some you, guys you, don't you know how to operate. You, you, you got it. You got it. in order. Y'all in this order. I'm, I'm glad I left this out. out. I'm I'm glad I left y'all back in jail. Remember when I I made a public statement? I said, I ain't yeah. fucking with you niggas no more. I'm out. Remember Mr. I said Mr. that? Palm, Mr. Palmer oh. said it to everybody, yeah. too. You said it. You did yeah. say it. Yeah, and I seen this coming. I Look, I told y'all a year ago. I knew it. You let that white woman in here. She got y'all ear. You got all these people running over there. That's going to be your new leader. And whether you like it or not, just nope. Pearly, just Pearly Samuels is your <laughs> new leader. How do I know? Because she's the one all y'all running up behind. She's the one y'all talking about every day. You see what I mean? That's just new leader. That she's the leader of the monkey, monkey crew. That's what they call them. <laughs> one white woman. She just got, that's what she did. All these intellectuals and lawyers and all these doctors and all, all y'all running up behind that white woman. This one sad. white woman who's a four on the Richter scale. Ain't that something? It don't even matter. I how say three. What did, what did my man say who it passed away? Matter. That white skin. It 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 it. What is what did my man say about that white skin? It it does away with so many uh, impediments and blemishes to black people. You're sick people. Let me just let me be serious for a minute. Okay. You're sick people. You're sick people, and it shows. And every time I think that we're making progress, revert right back to who you always have been. And you, and I'm gonna say this again. You black Americans specifically, and I'm talking to my brothers and sisters. You will never have peace in this country because you are stolen people on the stolen land. I don't care how many made up religions these motherfuckers come up with telling you that you the Native Americans and all that shit. You are a stolen people from West Africa and, and South Africa and Central Asia, African people. And you were dragged over here in the bellies of ships against your will. Your people helped sell you in here. And another group of people kept you here and kept you oppressed. You will never have peace in this country. You will always be a second and third class citizen. You will never be treated as equal. I don't care how close you get to white. I don't care if you're dating a white woman. That white woman can lie on you and you still be the one to suffer and go to jail. A white woman can come amidst us, amongst us, and your love and, 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 and infatuation with that whiteness will cause for you to divide from your people from your brothers and sisters that you used to call friend. Same thing happens to white men. Let a white man come up here and start talking to these black women and telling them they should yeah. love themselves and whatnot. You you think Derek Jackson is bad. You oh. see what I'm saying? Let 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 goddamn uh you know Bill Abercrombie come up in here and this whole thing will be divided. You're easily divided people, you're weak people. And this is what we need to address. And I'm not talking, and it's not that white woman's fault. It is not just pearly things' fault that you Negroes are so easily divided. Just like it's not any of these politicians who come to our community and get us to vote this way and that way, which goes against our interests. It's not any of these actors or actresses or these singers who come in and take our stuff and use it, and then we divide it. But I like Justin Timberlake. It's not their fault <laughs> that they're taking advantage of us. If I got a football team and the, and the opposing offense can run through our defense, is it their fault for being good or is it our fault for not putting up the right defense? You see what I'm saying? We have to protect our things. We got to protect ourselves. I'm not mad at white people for doing what's in their own best interest. <clears throat> I'm never mad at the motherfucker who whoops your ass. You see what I'm saying? If you get your ass whooped, that's your motherfucking fault. I'm not mad at that. I've been stomped. I've been beat. I got my ass whooped. I learned. I'm not going to be mad at white people for continually whooping our ass. And we see them whooping our ass. And we could do something about it if we just unified and say, you ain't going to whoop our ass like that no more. But you won't. What happens when white people start whooping our ass, half of you Negroes run over there and help them whoop our ass. Half of the ones that left sit on the sideline and say, I don't want to get involved. And so you left, you left with a quarter of the black people saying, this is bullshit. And then they turn on each other. We get in a circular firing squad. And then the white people sit back and say, see, they the same monkeys they always been. And it don't matter if it's in America. It don't matter if it's in the UK. It don't matter 
if it's in uh, uh, in the motherland, it don't matter wherever it is. We still the same people, this sick group of people that love others more than we love ourselves. There's absolutely no reason we should have more beef for our African brothers and our Jamaican brothers and our West Indian brothers than we have for this white woman. But right now, we've divided ourselves up. And I'll yeah. play the FBA game with you. I'll play that. I'll play the F. I'm West. I'm from Trinidad and I'm from Jamaica and I'm from motherfucking. Uh, I'm light skinned and you dark skinned and I'm from South Africa. You got South African kicking Nigerians out of their country. All of y'all are one big Negro to the rest of the world, to the Asians, to the Chinese, to the, to the Europeans, to, to the Central Asia. You're one big Negro. And That's until it. we come together as a people, Nothing's going to change. And that's not going to happen until you start having self-respect till we start teaching self-respect to ourselves. So nobody's going to be able to come between us and say, yeah, yeah, I can do your job better than you. Let me come look at me. You love them folk, man. Y'all love them folk, man. You love their things. Why do you think our African brothers sold us into slavery? We have been doing well for thousands of years. White man comes from uh, Europe with a pot and some gunpowder. That's it. Give me 30 of your Negroes, put them on the boat and well, some fucking firecrackers and a cooking pot. We ain't been eating good in Africa. You said for a thousand years, we ain't been eating good. Why do we need the white man's <laughs> pot? You understand what I'm saying? The white man come in with a horse and say, oh, yeah, here, give me 15, 15 Negroes. I give you this horse. You ain't seen a fucking zebra before. It's a far legged question. We know what it does. You understand what I'm saying? And so it's still, as long as you as black people put that much uh, on what white people have and what do you never had your own. We got Nigerian people that make making cars over there, but your ass is going to buy a BMW. I know it. Yeah. We got Nigerians. You know why so many cars being stolen in Philadelphia right now? Ask the fucking Italian mafia. Why they yeah. take it the, the Russian mafia and the turn in uh, and, and you niggas will work together with some criminal shit. The Italian mafia and the German mafia, is hiring street niggas on in Philadelphia to steal and jack cars, and they putting them on boats and they sending them to Nigeria. That's where y'all getting the Mercedes Benzes and stuff from. And the reason carjacking has gone up is because you got these automatic cars that won't start without the key fob there. So they right. got instead of just stealing the cars like they used to, they outright carjacking. That's what's going on over there. But at the end of the day, you want that white money? Our black brothers in Nigeria want these German cars, and this is what we're dealing with. And so until you start having self-respect and loving yourself, nothing's going to change, fella. I love y'all, but you know, fuck me. <laughs> My love. Nah, not you're cool, man. That white, woman, that white woman tell you she love you, she appreciates you, y'all all up in her ass. White man tell you that, you all up in his ass. You got a black man who is renowned as one of the best attorneys in America. That's me, motherfuckers. One of the, let me show you, since y'all like white people, let me show you my white friends. Since y'all don't think this motherfucker's question whether I'm not even, even a fucking lawyer. This is how crazy shit is. So I just settled a case with these white folks right here. See that? That's me in federal court last year. I know you can't see their faces. $40 million case. This is what I'm doing in the daytime. I come up here and talk to you Negroes every goddamn night. I got 60,000 subscribers. That white woman shows up in March or uh, June of last year, she got 1.5 million subscribers. You see what I'm saying? Y'all did that. Y'all made it hot. You see what I mean? It's Negroes I ain't talked to. They all up on all up in their cha-chas. It's your fault, brothers. It, uh, it, uh, and it's the sister's fault, too, because we got a fixation with whiteness. But anyway, that ain't my motherfucking problem. I mean, Man. You, Anyway, LaShawn Jones, thank you. said nothing but the truth, Uncle B. I love y'all. We got healing to do. I hope y'all uh, take this message from a place of love. I don't mean no harm. I meant what I said, though. But either way, shout out to our pain, Mr. Holden, Mr. Allen, Mr. Gerald, and Mr. P. Money. Always good to have y'all in here. Other than that, man, God bless y'all. I love y'all. I'm out. Thanks for it.